Today, I will be tackling my parents' laundry room closet nook situation that they got going on, and I partnered up with my friends over at Squarespace. That is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business, and your girl is actually going to be starting a website, so I will bring you along that journey within this video, but let's dive in. I don't typically show this process, but this is me pulling everything that I have on hand that I think I'm going to need to execute this room for my parents. And I'm happy to report that all building materials, any paint, stain, anything you see that is like physically making over the space, I did not have to buy. I had it all on hand. I knew I needed wood that was 66 and three quarters inch long in order to build out these wall to wall shelves that I have in my laundry room. Here is the laundry closet in all its glory. My dad actually built this out himself. He's built the entire house. If you haven't seen our bathroom or patio makeover, I'll link those for you. The first thing that I did though, there was only one light bulb in this laundry closet. So I brought some of the light bulbs that I had left over from Holly's bathroom makeover. I showed you the different types of whites. I'm using this soft white that runs throughout my entire parents' house. That was a weird sentence. Sorry about that. <laughs> Anybody like my mom in your life where they cannot see a space, tape it out. I am not kidding. This works wonders for someone that's not very visual to grasp what you're going to do and to be able to move forward. It sounds like I'm lying, but I really did have a brand new gallon of this paint. I forget the name. I'm going to put it down in the description box for you alongside other stain names that I use and anything else that you're going to be seeing in this space. So I just used that gallon of paint to paint this little nook. This doesn't need to hold a ton of clothes or storage, so I kind of wanted to keep it simple and sweet. I'm going to start by adding the tried and true shelf like I have in my laundry room, but I'm just going to be doing one of those with a two by two frame. I have a tutorial on this, but I am actually taking some tips out of Mike from Modern Builds, his latest plywood wrapped floating shelves that are pretty sick, which I will card for you and link for you as well. Uh, you basically just want to put your frame into the studs. If not, you want to use drywall anchors, but can we take a second? I had to leave to finish the wraparound wood and look what happened the next day. That's stain. That's stain in all of the battery portions of my power tools. Oh, and the best one yet. I brought a brand new jigsaw because mine broke. That's stain. None of my tools that I brought work because the whole bottom of that's full of stain that I forgot to put the lid on. Let's figure it out. We just need to put the stained wood, which is stained on the other side, onto here. Like what a dip. So this has varnish on it that I sanded down, um, so it's a little bit dusty because I'm gonna add that outer layer piece and do the final varnish coat all in here. Isn't that stain so cute all over my tools? I also didn't cut this piece of wood correctly, not cut it, I didn't measure correctly, so I need to trim it down so it could actually fit and cover the frame to make it look like a solid piece of wood. Can we also take a moment how my rat tail always finds its way out even when I try to lock it down with a headband? It legitimately has a mind of its own. I cannot. If you watch my floating shelf tutorial, I didn't cut the edges where they meet out of 45 so it looks like a solid piece of wood. You can see the end grain because I didn't really know how to do that at the time. Mike from Modern Builds shows you exactly what you need to do to make this look like a legit piece of just solid wood. He tapes it and glues it together and makes it so it's a sleeve that can just pop over. I am just going to directly nail the wood into the two by two frame. The stain on my hands is not from the stain on the wood. It's from the spill, obviously, but I was just a mess this day. Uh, this was way too big. I needed to take it back home to the table saw and just trim off a little bit from this side. And you will be seeing me wearing the same thing for the three days or four days that I worked on this. This laundry room closet is actually very deep for my mom. She's like four foot nothing and can't really reach back towards the wall. I will solve that with side storage, but because she doesn't need that wall space above the washer and dryer to be like quote unquote actually functional, I decided to create a shiplap backer, which I have a shiplap tutorial for you. I will link and make a wall quote, which you've seen me do before with these wooden letters that I painted black from Joann's. And I just started to spell out what goes best with laundry. I just eyeball spacing it to be completely honest and then I use wood glue and a little paintbrush to attach everything together since wood glue is very strong. I just did a whole in-depth beginner woodworking tutorial on a DIY wall decor similar as this. I walk you through it there and then I decided to cut the wine portion out of the quote on a scroll saw which is new to me. I don't do that quite often but before you dive into that I'm going to talk about something else that is new to me and that is developing my own website like what is happening? 
I partnered up with my friends over at Squarespace for the next couple of months and I am kind of nervous but excited to be able to work on my website officially. There are a lot of things happening behind the scenes, but I do need a website in order to launch them. And that's where Squarespace is so great because it's an all-in-one. You can do your blogging, but you can also do your e-commerce. Squarespace has powerful blogging tools to tell your story, share your updates, and post photos and videos. You can categorize, share, and schedule your posts to make your content work for you. And I think that's something that I will be dabbling into in the beginning as I prep my page to be more of an e-commerce, which might be a little hint for something for you guys. Squarespace also has the tools you need to get your business off the ground, which is what I am trying to do on another level, including e-commerce templates, inventory management, a simple checkout process, and secure payments. Whatever you sell, Squarespace has merchandising features to make your products look their best online. Be sure to check out squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Mets to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And also be sure to be on the lookout for when I announce when my website's going to be going live. I really cannot wait to share that with you guys. But let's dive right back in to this makeover and talk about something else that's new to me. Scroll sawing just in general scares me. Uh, but if you just go slow and steady, you can sort of win the race as a beginner. I picked the wrong material to cut this wine out of. It was definitely too thin of a font and just snapped in half, but that didn't deter me, is that the correct word? I hope so, from gluing it after I sanded it down smooth. I learned this tip from my friend Lizzie of the House of Timber is to go over whatever words you're scrolling or using with like a filler primer, which is gray. Oops, almost lost the dot to that eye. And then go back over once it's dry with your color of choice, which I'm gonna keep mine to being black. I framed it out with some square dowels that I had on hand in my scrap wood pile, added some wood glue, and used my nail gun to secure. The hanging hardware is totally up to you and the weight of the wall decor. I just did two simple brackets. And then after all is said and done making a mess, that is when I added the final wine touch. We are back for the final day. Yes, in the same outfit. Paint and schmeg all over this thing. I'm not changing. Once I trimmed that front piece of wood off, which is mitered at a 45 on both sides, connecting to the pieces of wood, making it look flush like a solid piece of wood, I moved forward with creating this back shelf, but it's not gonna be weight bearing. I did this in my laundry makeover, but I didn't jigsaw out a place for the cords, so it didn't sit flush to the wall. I don't know, like, what was I thinking? So I just jigsawed a little area for any kind of cord that might be needing to go through or you need to work with that way you can unplug and adjust accordingly i'm going to use some construction adhesive to glue some brackets to the bottom of that board then directly connect it to anchors in the drywall or the studs whatever you want behind the washer and dryer and this was like i needed to contort my body in so many ways off camera there was no way i can film physically installing this because i literally had to squeeze in the smallest areas As I mentioned before, this laundry room closet is very deep and my mom is very little, so she can't really reach back. I decided to DIY some side shelving, which is basically a blend of the floating shelf and the bracket shelf that I just showed you. And the reason I added brackets and didn't fully do what I did above the washer and dryer to the sides is because if they get a new washer and dryer and they're a little bit wider, because they definitely won't be more deep, um, they can easily take these off and they don't have to destroy it. They can just take the brackets out of the wall versus taking the wood off of the entire floating shelf and then removing the frame. I installed one of those on each side of the washer and dryer and then hung up that wall art, which I don't know about any of you. Even when I try to make this level, I'm gonna have to re-nail it like four times. So it kept being off-centered a little bit, but I fixed that. First one you saw me in the gray sweater was framed with plywood. The second one has square dowels, which looks a lot better. The shelf that is behind the washer and dryer, a little bit above the side shelves, there's a gap. And in my laundry room, you can totally see through it and see to the wall. So I cut down some scrap wood that I had on hand and covered it with peel and stick tile to create a faux backsplash. I'm just going to be cutting down a two by two and basically rapid fusing it from the bottom of the top shelf to the top of the bottom shelf so it stays nice and wedged in there and it has a place for this backsplash to attach to. 
my mom was home all day taking sneak peeks and getting very excited about this and then my dad walked in and I had to show him because the last time he saw it was just the frame of that upper shelf. I love my parents so much. <laughs> I'm gonna redo the middle piece because it's bothering me, but. It's what? It's bothering me, but just. Holy f. Holy f. What do you think? Does <laughs> That's it That's nuts. Great? <laughs> do you love it? Oh my god, I can't believe it. Okay, good. That makes me happy. This looks legit. Thanks, Dad. Don't forget you want to add some caulk. I say caulk because caulk is how you really say it and that makes me feel a little bit awkward. You're gonna just caulk it out along the sides to clean it up. This entire build out was completely free. I had everything on hand, so I didn't feel bad purchasing nicer decor off of Amazon that fit the measurements of the space. My parents' laundry room closet has looked like this for 10 plus years, so it might not be a dramatic laundry room closet makeover, but it is a makeover tailored specifically to my parents, which I love so much because I talked to my mom about colors since she's making over the entire house right now. It blends with that, and then that giraffe is just a tchotchke that she has in every single room she has these really unique pieces i have no idea where they have come from but they just make the house feel like a home the, the one that i grew up in so i wanted to keep that through and through to this laundry room i wanted to make note that i hung these off camera once i realized she needed a place to air dry things and they're meant to be hung next to each other so you can put a rod across but she doesn't have that much space here i guess i could have done a rod going across that bottom shelf but again she can't reach far that back because she is on the shorter side so i brought them closer to the sides and in reach so it can be functional for my mama but I wanted to show you the real truth of how it's gonna be used, and that's gonna be looking a little like this. And again, nothing wrong with it not being clean and pristine with the glass bottles or that she wants a trash can because what mama wants, mama gets. And let me tell you, Mama Metz wants a lot of other projects that I'm very excited to help her tackle or tackle for her or tackle with my dad, however that ends up playing out. But thank you so much for Squarespace for sponsoring today's episode. I will see you guys soon for another DIY.